What about utilizing the event to actually create content? What are your thoughts on that? I think it's awesome. User-generated content at the event. Mm -hmm. You know what I saw I've done really well at HR Tech? I was at HR Tech, and I don't remember the company that did this. This was not a client of mine. But they had almost like a roving reporter on site. And they were like, we're just going to ask you three questions. And they asked me something about, you know, advice to my younger self. You know, what do I hope for from my employer? Something to that effect, right? Um, because it was HR. And they created all of this wonderful user-generated content from their attendees. They put it up on the screen in their booth as people were talking about it. And then they took little snippets of it and created these little video pieces that they used on social media, that they used in their email campaigns afterwards to say, hey, look, this is what people are looking for. This is what we are solving for. Um, listen to, you know, so-and-so say, this is what they're looking for from a, an, an HR program. Um, we offer that solution. And mm -hmm. I just thought it was so smart. The whole thing was so smart and it was all user-generated content on site. But yeah, I think, I think that's great. You have to leverage being there. You have to leverage it. It is in a way like thought leadership. Like you have to leverage your presence, leverage the industry, leverage the conversation that's happening. Mm -hmm. So one thing I've seen recently that I'm seeing is like, I don't know if it was at Saster or if it was at HubSpot Inbound, but there were people utilizing those cardboard signs. So where they write something on a cardboard sign and they hold it up and they stand there. So they're just in the exhibit hall with a cardboard sign that says something like a message, right? And they're just holding it up like you see on Facebook, Instagram, where people hold up a sign, right? But then what's crazy is it is out of the ordinary. It is unique. It is different. It's not really common at a trade show. But then they're like taking pictures and running video of the conversations that they're having as people are passing. And then that's getting repurposed into content. So something so simple, but that message on and a it, cardboard was sparking conversation. So a question about that. Was that the show organizer that did that? No. No, it was, it was uh, an exhibitor. Either like an exhibitor or attendee or somebody like that. You know what I mean? Like holding up a message and then they recorded themselves, but they're cre the whole point of that was to create content. It was not yeah. to stand there with a cardboard box and, and hold up a sign. It was a it was a pop culture style, you know, yeah, way of garnering yeah. attention. Yes, yes, absolutely. I thought it was pretty smart. I didn't think it created enough value. I thought it was just kind of an attention grabbing thing, but I don't see the value that's coming to the customer from it other than if you just think it's cool. That was the only miss I felt that it had, right? Right. Question here from Agnes. Agnes, thank you for asking a question. What's your favorite game activity to attract visitors to your booth for a B2B event? Game or activity? My favorite, I like cause marketing opportunities. So we do this wonderful charity wall and have done it for a couple of clients now where, and, and it's all mobile led. So on your mobile device, you can access a QR code and then answer a couple questions and as, or play a little game on your phone. And then when you do the award is that it gives you a donation to a specific charity, but we have it tied to this big kind of led wall where different tiles are revealed. It's a mosaic LED wall. Different tiles are revealed anytime somebody does it. So at the end, you can see just how many people have donated to the cause. You've learned something as an attendee from having done those couple of questions or playing that little game on your own. And then they're going to give back afterwards. So I, I love that as an option. I also love trivia games. We did this wonderful suit, you know, spoof off of what's the one where they held the suitcases I know what you're talking about. They had girls up on like a, it was almost like a triangular stage and they all had a suitcase with money. Yeah. Deal or no deal. Thank you, Jamie. Dealer, thank, thank you. you nice. Yes. There we go. <laughs> Got it. Deal or no Got deal. So we did a spoof off of that. That was enormous fun and gathered all kinds of crowds as well. There's lots of things you can do. Spoof on games that exist that do really yeah. well are always a great way to go. But yeah, there's, there's so many different fun interactive games, uh, but those are a couple of my favorites so far.
Nice. Yeah. That's a really good question. Agnes. I would say the one, it's not really a game. I, I do love any form of competition because I think people love competition. If you can make it fun, kind of healthy and get people there, I think it's always a good way of doing it. I think inside your exhibit space, you know, and we did this at one point, we ran this podcast inside our exhibit space. So it's not really a game, but it is, I guess you call it like an activity. I get you call it like a, a bit of an activation in inside your space. So either running a podcast or hosting panel discussions, you don't have to have anything to host panel that you build a small stage inside your booth, host panel discussions and film it and just get really smart people to come in and have really great conversations. What I love about that is you can film it, you can repurpose it. It garners attention on the floor. You're, you're carrying industry conversation with really smart people. And that's one of my favorite for. Yeah. For I sure. think Matt, what you did really well at that is that you had not only industry, industry experts, but also just event marketers who were attendees. So you yeah. had, you had exhibitors you, yeah. plus attendees and you were talking to the actual people on the show floor. And so you got this wide variety of, of a number of different people from, a lot of different viewpoints. I thought that worked really well for you at Exhibitor. Thank you. Yeah, no, it was fun. And it was, we weren't really sure how it was going to go. We thought it would be the most difficult to get the CTSM event marketing people to come on, but we ended up getting a lot of people to come on, which was awesome. I had such good conversations. Like what's keeping you up at night? What are you worried about? What are the skills you're hoping to acquire? Like what's problems you're having that maybe I could connect you with somebody else that's maybe solved it. And then having people like yourself, right? Having people like Dave Wallens and his experience in the industry, you know, Jason Weddle, my buddy from Hamilton exhibits, right? Like talking about what's happening, sustainability. Like, yes, it was cool. It was good to just kind of have that discussion. And I was just shocked by how many people came by and were like, what are you doing over here? What are you talking about? You know what I mean? Yeah. So we would scare people with politics questions when they came up. We would be like, oh, we're, we're having a political conversation. It was like a running joke. And people would be like, I don't want to talk about that. We're like, no, we're not talking about politics. We're just kidding. So, <laughs> but it was fun. Question from Robert. Robert, great question. I, I love this. Everybody keep them coming if you have certain ones. Robert says, great knowledge share. When does it make sense to live stream from an event when people watching cannot interact with the live speakers? Specific, I like that. that so when does it make sense to live stream at, at your event when the people watching cannot interact with live speakers? So I don't know how you feel about this, Christina, but I would say the example I gave previously, Robert, was that we have a company that we're connected to, they're a manufacturer, they make a product, and we were going to do live demonstrations of the assembly of their product because the assembly being quick, fast, easy, and more efficient than all their competitors was a value proposition. We didn't need an interaction from a live stream, but would have loved for them to live stream it so people at home could watch, and then we could market and promote it on the back end saying, hey, do you want to learn about the quick assembly of A, B, and C? We're going to do demonstrations. I would also add to that, you have to live stream when you have an audience to live stream. So if you don't have an audience to live stream, live streaming really doesn't make any sense. So how active is uh, the company, the community in that space is what well, I would say and for there. Well, and to piggyback off that, you can always have somebody from your team serving as a moderator. So even if they can't ask questions directly to the panelist, that moderator can either answer questions for them or can say, hey, listen, we're taking all of your questions. We're going to reach out after the show. We will get them answered for you. Thank you so much for being here. So I, I never think live streaming is bad, provided, as you said, that you do have the audience. And Kevin had asked if, if it's an effective way to engage the show with an online audience. Yes, absolutely. For it's sure. a way to expand your reach, right? So that your show is not only within the confines of the exhibit yeah. hall, but moves on into that online space as well. I don't know how you feel about this, but I think any way that you can extend the presence and the event whether it's after or during and spread it, whether it's with a viral moment, whether it's with an Instagrammable pictures, imagery, a place where people want to stop by, whether it's a live demonstration virtual that you can then go after a whole nother audience that's not there. I am always for that. What is your reach? How can you create more? And how can you maximize three to four days at a show? Absolutely. I'm always for that. And then since we're talking about repurposing, when you do post those pieces of content, 
what worked well? And then can you repurpose those pieces, right? Did you get yeah. a lot of comments that you then want to turn into a blog post? Did you get a lot of comments that you then, or, or suggestions? Oh, that's really that, smart. I love you that. Know, yeah. So there's always different ways to um, take what it is that you've posted or um, that you've that you've put out into the world and then turn it into something else if you have the right creative team. Yeah. I think what, like what I'm hearing you say with that is that when you do the right activities and those things that afford you these other opportunities to piggyback off of it. And if you're thinking like a marketer, you're constantly using it to leverage, to extend the life of the event, right. To just create your touch points with your clients. 